everyone, I'm Rockin' Robin from CookingMexicanRecipes.com and today I'm going to show you how to make some homemade cream of mushroom soup. Now I was inspired recently to make it from scratch because I was at the grocery store looking at a can to buy and I didn't really like what I saw and I do want to encourage you um, whenever you're at the store to start reading labels if you want to eat healthier before you put anything in your shopping cart. Anyway, so I'm looking at the can and I'm seeing a lot of sodium and I'm seeing MSG and preservatives and I decided it can't be that tough to do. So that's what I'm going to show you today, so don't go away. I'll be right back to tell you how to do it. So let me go over all the ingredients with you so we can get started. All right, we're gonna need a, a pound of mushrooms and I'm using the white button mushrooms. You can use any kind you'd like. We'll need some diced up yellow onion. I have some celery, some shredded carrot. Over here I have some butter and some olive oil. And then our spices will be some dried thyme, basil. I'll have some salt, garlic powder, some chicken broth, and then here I have some half and half. Now with the half and half, if you want to, I chose middle of the road, so that's why I chose half and half. Um, you could go, if you want a nice, really rich and creamy cream of mushroom soup, then you might want to go heavy whipping cream. Or um, you could go the other way. You could just use regular whole milk. So whatever works for you. All right, let's get started. So we're gonna start off with sauteing our onions and carrots and celery. So I have my pan on medium high and I'm gonna add the butter to the pan and you know a couple, a couple tablespoons of olive oil. Now as soon as this melts, we will add those ingredients. So once you see the butter starting to bubble, we'll add our onions, our celery, and the carrots. Now the carrots are gonna, are used just to sweeten this up just a little bit. Now I'm gonna saute these for about five minutes and just stirring occasionally. It's been five minutes and you can see the onions look translucent. Now I don't, as you notice, there's not a whole lot of oil in the bottom of this pan. So before I add the mushrooms, I'm gonna add just a little, about another tablespoon of oil. And now I'm gonna add the mushrooms because we have quite a few here and they absorb quite a bit. Now I'm gonna give that a little stir first and then I'm gonna start adding all the other ingredients. All right, so here's the thyme and the basil, garlic powder, and the salt. Now I'm gonna have all the, uh, the amounts of the ingredients in the description of this video so you can find it there. All right, so now at this point, I'm just going to keep stirring to combine everything and we're going to cook this mixture for about 15 minutes. We want all the moisture to come out of these uh, mushrooms and then once that is all evaporated it should be done. And like I said it'll take about 15 maybe 18 minutes. The mushrooms have been cooking now for 15 minutes. I want you to have a look and see. They've released uh, their moisture and it's pretty much cooked out. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to turn the flame off and I'm going to let these cool for about five minutes and then I'm going to show you my little secret on how to make a mushroom soup that's nice and thick and creamy. So I'll show you that in just a bit. Now that our mushrooms have cooled a bit, I'm ready to put them in a blender. So that's what I'm going to do right here. So I'm just going to scoop all this in, get all that in there. Now I'm going to add my chicken broth and we're going to puree this. Not at all. Now for some of you, you might want to leave some mushrooms that are whole in your soup, but I like to puree mine completely. That's just how we like it. So that's up to you. If you want to leave some out and you can just stir it in later, that's fine. Okay, so here we go. All right, so now we're gonna put this mixture back into our pan and I've got the heat on low for the moment. And now, I'm going to add the half and half. And once we bring this up to temperature, then we're going to taste it and adjust our seasonings. All right, so I've got the temperature on medium right now. I want to bring this up to a simmer. And then I'm going to let it simmer for about 10 minutes. But I want you to see the texture here. It's so nice and creamy. Look at this. Look at that. Nice and creamy. And 
you know, there was no thickeners used, obviously, and that's just because we're mixing and pureeing all those vegetables and the mushrooms, which give it its body. So it's a great way to do it. And I'm gonna go ahead and taste this right now to make sure that the seasonings are correct. Oh, that's really good. I think I'm gonna add just a little bit of pepper. And this will be done in about 10 minutes. So that's all there is to it, guys. This is really super easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and serve some up. And uh, if you, you know, the best way to save this, because I like to use it in other recipes. In fact, I'm gonna be coming out with another recipe that's gonna use this particular recipe of uh, cream of mushroom. So I hope you'll subscribe so you don't miss that. But um, anyway, let's give this a taste. You can garnish it up with a little bit of parsley right in the middle. Look at that. That looks delicious. All right, so let's give it a little taste. Mmm. Mm. Nice and rich, way better than that stuff that comes in a can. And so much better for you because you can control the ingredients and you know what's in it. It's all good, healthy food. All right, guys, well, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to leave me a comment and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any new videos coming out. I also want to mention that you can store this in the freezer by placing it in a mason, mason jar like this one, and it's a perfect serving size. It's almost, it's probably just about the same amount as you'd get in a can, so you could use that. So just chill it first, make sure you get it nice and cold before you stick it in the freezer. So, and you could also put it in a Ziploc bag, but make sure it's cold before you put it in the bag and then in the freezer, okay? So don't forget that. All right, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.